Yeah, I think it's big. We talked about it with our guys. If you can't win road games, you're going to have a hard time accomplishing much in college basketball. So we're, we're excited about it. I think you got to have some veteran guys that have been through it. You know, we've got some new guys. It'll be their first road trip. I think it's Shaq and Forbes, the freshman, playing quite a few minutes. So we'll see how they respond. I think initially it might be a little nervous for them, but I think they'll be all right. I think they're pretty tough-minded kids. I think one of the best things in college basketball is going on the road and kind of silencing the crowd. I mean, I've seen some pretty big uh, road upsets here this week, so I, I wouldn't call ours a road upset if we win, but you know, it's going to definitely be a tough game. Rhode Island, Rhode Island's a quality team. It's going to be, if we can manage to get the win, I think it's going to be a quality road win come March when people are looking at road wins. Yeah, I mean, we recruited uh, Langevin at Buffalo a little bit, and he ended up going to Rhode Island. He's she was averaging 17 rebounds a game, or what? I mean, it's it's a lot. He's averaging, or was it 16? Is that what he's averaging? 16 rebounds a game, and he's got 17 O boards in two games, which is you know eight and a half offensive rebounds. That, that, that's crazy. So, yeah, we're gonna have to put a body on him. I mean, he's gonna get some rebounds. We just can't let him get eight or nine offensive rebounds like he's got in the first two games. So some of those are his own misses. We got to box him out when he, when he shoots it. Just fouls his own misses up a lot. Some of those are other guys. So our, our bigs are going to have to be really locked in and keep him off the glass. You know what, Herb uh, participated in some of the uh, stuff in practice today. He didn't do any of the scrimmage type stuff. Um, he looked fairly decent to me in the skill stuff. So. We just didn't want to get him hurt. We're going to see what it feels like uh, tomorrow and shoot around and be kind of be a kind of game time decision. But I, I, he's a pretty tough kid. I would anticipate, you know, barring any, barring anything setback from what he did today. Like, he, you know, but the other thing though, we don't want to get him hurt, hurt anymore for down the road. We really need him healthy, you know, a few weeks from now. So we're, I don't know, Clark, Clark does a pretty good job. He's going to give me uh, give me a call on him like after shoot around tomorrow morning. How's Jake Sackerford? How's he responded to some of the coaches? I think he's, I think he's handled it great, to be honest with you. I mean, we've kind of talked to him like he wants to be great. He's asked us to push him. He wasn't very good on the defensive end in game one. We talked about it. He wants me to hold him accountable on defense. Sometimes you gotta bring a little bit more intensity to the conversation. So he's he's a really tough, strong-willed. You know, mentally tough type of kid. I think that can handle quite a bit. He's got a lot of confidence about him, so he's started to shake his confidence. I think he's. I think he did a way better job defensively the last game, and I think he's going to get even better defensively every game from here on out. There's a video. Guys like uh, like Beadle and Jalen. What do you feel like they've brought to the game so far? Yeah, I think Beadle and Jalen both brought shooting, which we needed here. I think they both brought some toughness to the table. Beadle gives us a lot of ball pressure. Gives us a fifth-year senior that's played in a lot of big games. I think we needed that. Shaq, Shaq gives you a score. You know, and whether he starts or comes off the bench, he's going to play a lot of minutes for us. And I think he also he kind of gives you that high character program type kid that's going to be here and you can build a program around. I, I, like, I'm a big fan of Shaq's. After the game, you mentioned uh, pounding the stone. Just what did you take away from that book? And how is that, is that something that you brought from, from Buffalo, that mandatory? Yeah, so we, we do a, we read a book together as a team every year, sometimes more than one. So we read Pound the Stone by Joshua Medcalf. It's a really good book. But the whole point of it is, you know, Jacob Rice has, has a quote about, you know, it's not that 101st blow of the stone that breaks and it's the 100 before it. We just talk about pounding the stone. You just got to keep getting stops, keep getting stops, keep getting stops. You may miss four or five shots in a row, but eventually you keep getting stops and and the stone breaks and you go on a big run. Like, I think you can crack them when you're really focused in on getting a stop every possession down. That's what happened. We got stops and run outs hit, you know, four threes, I think, maybe in that, in that 18 to two run. And I think that kind of cracked the stone and then we were able to, to win the game. We feel like if we really just pound the stone on the defensive end and play the right way, that eventually you crack them and you go on a run and, Kind of open the game up and get your win there. Is that something you did at Buffalo that, that made the 
Yeah, that is. We, we read a different book every year at Buffalo. We actually read Pound the Stone a few years ago there and ran through some other books and John Gordon books and thought, thought it was pretty good. Is that message kind of what you're preaching to John Petty after last game? Just kind of that like, you're going to need to get kind of hot and confident in three? Yeah, I mean, I think John's doing everything we're asking him to do. He's playing really hard on defense, giving us great effort, being a leader. So I kind of told him after the last game, and, one of these last couple of practices, I said, like, John, like, we didn't want you to forget about your offense while you're focusing on D. We want you to be the best two-way player you can be. So, he kind of, you know, he kind of laughed. He says, no, no, I got you. So, I, I just think he, he, his shot's going to come. We want him taking the right shots. When he gets the right shots, I think he's going to hit a pretty high percentage of them. Kyra's doing a great job finding shooters. I think the last few days in practice, John's gotten a lot of really good kick out threes, got some tough finishes at the rim. I think you'll see his offense come around like we expected to. How much of the kind of perspective Yeah, quite a bit. I mean, like analytics wise, they took a lot of long twos. At Buffalo, we were the sixth sixth best team in the country at not taking long twos last year. Some of that's with the way we space on offense, some of it's just a mindset of how you're doing. So we've had to change some of the mindset of how we want to play on offense and pace of play, spacing, and what, what we're looking for. Defensively, you know, we're trying to put a lot more ball pressure on. We're really trying to get guys. To not, they, they were a decent defensive team here in the past, but we, we don't have Dante Hall to kind of cover at the rim for us anymore. So, you know, we got to do things a little bit differently, and we're trying to get guys to really sit down and stand in front of the ball. And we got to be a lot, a lot more heavy in the gaps. Just we can't give up paint touches. They could give up paint touches here in the past, and, Get him a race with Dante Hall sitting there. We don't. We don't have. You know, Galen's a pretty good shot blocker, but he's, he's not Dante Hall. So we, we had to change a little bit of what we do defensively from what they're used to as well. Yeah, the longer you go with the system you're running, the, the more comfortable they get. I mean, we, our best year at Buffalo was year four. I mean, some of those guys have been with us four years. It's C.J. Massburg, Nick Perkins. It's the fourth year they ran that system. So yeah, I mean. Game one, yeah, everything doesn't look perfect. Like game two, it's going to be a lot better in February than it is right now. And I think guys are getting more comfortable every day in it. And we're just going to keep pounding the stone and keep working on it and get better and better offensively and defensively both. Let's do one more question, for Coach. I know it's pretty early to be talking like tourney resume type stuff, but how big would it be for you guys to go and get a non conference? No, it would be huge. And we talked about it. The A10s looked really good. VCU beat LSU. St. Joe's beat UConn. I think, you know, the A-10 is going to be back to where they have made three or four NCAA tournament teams, I would think. So, and Rhode Island's, in my mind, going to be one of those teams in the hunt for that. So, if we could get a road win against an NCAA tournament team, I think this is huge in March, and we address that with the team. And Not that you should have to let them know how important this is, but I think it's really important. Like, we only got so many opportunities for non-conference road wins against NCAA tournament teams. I mean, probably two, probably this one in Penn State, and they're, they're both quality teams. And so we, we got to do everything we can to get this win here tomorrow. All right, thank you, Oscar.